here's what I know. Here's what I know about joy and happiness. Here's what I've learned. Happiness is an effort. It requires effort. You don't just wake up and do nothing and get to be happy. You have to be really, really intentional on identifying not just things that make you feel good in the moment, but things that actually recharge you, right? So you're not operating from moment to moment, more like period to period. And so when I was there, like I didn't, I've traveled by myself for business many times, but like mm. leisure, no plans, nobody's here waiting for me to see me with an agenda. Yeah. It was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, yeah. no, no friends, no family, no significant other, just me. Um, this was a first for me and this I need regularly. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We're here to teach you guys how to be entrepreneurs, how to make money as entrepreneurs, how to feel good mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs, which is really important. So I'm drinking this gallon of water. That you bought five days ago? Relax. Relax. <laughs> um, you were uh, to buy that water five days ago. How was your week? My week has been amazing. Mm -hmm. I, did, I had a first a couple of days ago, and my week has been really amazing uh, since, and I am just being really intentional and maintaining that energy. First what? I took my first leisure trip by myself. I've never mm. traveled for fun alone. And this wasn't really a for fun trip. This was like a clarity and meditation experience for me. I went away. I went to a meditation resort. I did one guided meditation. And then in the resort, they have this nook in your room and everything that you need. So there's a med there's like a yoga mat for you to sit and meditate on. They have uh, a variety of like, you know how the rooms come with the iPads. They have a variety of like meditations that you can do on a Bluetooth. It's like throughout the whole mm. room. It goes into the bathroom with you. Like the sounds are everywhere. So I did one guided meditation and then everything else was in my room. I did not leave my room for three and a half days. Really? Room service nonstop, fresh squeezed juices nonstop. The chain, you know, you could request what you want. I had times that I wanted them to bring me um, new linen spray for my linens, and they came in with eucalyptus mint and spritz the room. And I'm oh, just wow. like, yes, yes to all of this. And you're in the room for three and a half days. Three in my, I only left one time to do the guided meditation. And when what I, what room is it? I mean, was it a big room? I, I was in a suite. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I was in a like, you know, like the one bedroom suite of, of the hotel. A normal room is like 300 square feet. This one was probably like a thousand. square oh, feet. Oh, wow. Yeah. And just beautiful views of the mountains. And I had been wanting to take a trip like this for years. Finally did it. And I wanted to end the new year for me because it's such hustle and bustle with my clients. All my clients are trying to smash into, you know, the last minute activity for their goals. Mm -hmm. I wanted to in the year just in like flow and begin the year in flow, but with consistency, I didn't want to crash into anything. And it was amazing. I did that. Um, and, I'm sorry. Was uh, there a reason you didn't like go out into the mountain? Well, I don't know if it's cold or yeah. I don't know. any reason why you didn't go out and explore. Mm -hmm. One, I didn't have enough time. So I need more to, like I, this trip. Three and a half days. Three and a half days. I didn't have enough time. This trip was really clear. I had a to-do list. I wish I had it with me. I had a three-page to-do list of things mm. that work that I needed to knock out that I procrastinated on all year. And then some things that I needed clarity on. And you'd be surprised that three and a half days just really isn't enough time. There was only really one day that didn't rain. Too. So oh, wow, the okay. one day that didn't rain, I just, I was in a groove. I'm knocking stuff out, checking things off my to-do list. And it was relaxing. Like I didn't have the pressure of, I turned my phone completely off, not even like do not disturb. Yeah. It's off. Oh, There's wow. no pressure of my phone ringing and people around me or, you know, I live in a condo building. There's no hearing neighbors outside of the door and the V8 cars zooming past my building. It was just serenity. And I've decided that I have to do that type of experience by myself quarterly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can you, do you mind sharing some of the stuff that was on the to-do list though? Like, was it work related? Was it personal? Was it like, yeah, I don't know. Um, honestly, most of it was, was work related. It, most of it was goals related. 
Um, and, and there was some personal stuff too, but it wasn't like on the to-do list. There's just some things that I needed to think through. Um, but most of it was work related and a girlfriend of mine asked, well, why would you take this meditation and clarity trip just to go and work? Mm-hmm. And my next question, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like sit at the computer and cram and knock these things out. It was me it was a clarity trip and it was me clearing through things that were causing stress. Like it's just weighing heavy on me because I hadn't had a minute to myself to work on my own things that I need Mm. to get done. And so I took that time to work through these things in my own time. Like I literally had 24 hours in the day. There was no time to be asleep or to wake up. And I just navigated like I needed to shift the system in my business did it and executed it flawlessly. No problem with it whatsoever. Um, I wanted to, um, I I changed some systems out of my business. I'm mapping out a new funnel strategy. So all the clients that I will work with this year um, who do like webinars and challenges, there will be a particular strategy um, for them that I want to test out. So I was able to think through that without any interruption, which is a big deal because this is a multi-million dollar um, funnel. I needed to get deep. Like I needed to do some, some really deep prayer Mm -hmm. and just, you know, we pray daily, but it's like quick, let me get my prayer in. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me get that prayer in. And and it's short. I wanted to spend the day in prayer, Mm -hmm. the day in meditation. And it was just perfect. Good. You know, it's interesting that like even you coming in and, you have a different vibe to you. Mm. Almost like a heaviness has been lifted. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, we, we've talked about this many times on the podcast, but I spent the majority of last year just feeling really heavy. And, um, and what's crazy is, like, I was feeling so heavy, and then you log on to social media and you see something negative has happened to somebody else that – you know, you don't even know. And then it's like heavier and you're sad, sad, sad all over again. While I was in on my last day um, on my trip, a friend of mine actually died. Mm. Um, shout out to Gangsta Boo, Lola Mitchell, my girl. That's, love your, you that's so a much. friend of yours. Yes. Oh, wow. And wow. I saw the news of it and I'm like, why would this happen? Like on my last day, this is the last thing that I need. I don't need, you know, stuff like this to happen, you know, blah, blah. And I thought I expected to wake up the next day, like feeling really sad about her death, like focusing on that. And though I am sad about her death, I woke up the next day just in gratitude that I got to be her friend. Mm -hmm. Like she's a rap pioneer, Um, you know, I was a rapper back in the day. She was one of the first women that I looked up to in that space. And then late, I was a fan. And then when I got into real estate much later, I would end up helping her, uh, Lisa home. And she was new, you know, kind of to the city, Brent coming here. And we ended up becoming friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, she was so sweet, you know, her music, she's so hard and masculine, but she's so soft and so sweet. And instead of me waking up being sad that next day, I woke up just laughing about her and and being grateful that I got to experience some of her life. Man, you recharged your battery. I recharged my battery. Oh, I can't wait till my till yeah. I get one. When of are my, you going? I don't know. We were supposed to do the thing on the twenty. We're not. I don't know. Yeah, you, what we, we doing? You were supposed to pick the place. Oh, no. I was supposed to pick the, the country, and I did Mexico. Oh, you did? Okay, all right, cool. Let's yeah, talk. I mean, where else is there to go? It's it's this month. It's chilly outside around the United we States. Like two, all right, cool. We Listen, it's going down. Hold on. It's going down. What are the dates? Let's just clear those again real Let's quick. go with um, the 25th, 26th, and 27th. Sounds great. I like that. Okay. I like that. And uh, whoever, in terms of, you know, you, you picking for this mastermind, we're still involving other humans? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can. We have a lot to get done, too. We do have a lot to we, get done. We have a lot. So, yes, it would be great. I think it would be a great idea. But if we don't and people aren't available, this is last minute. Um, I'm cool with that, too, because we have a lot to think through. And I thought through all that stuff and, yeah. you know, all these ideas. Things are moving, honey. Yeah. And I'm just, well, here's what I know. Here's what I know about joy and happiness. Here's what I've learned. 
Happiness is an effort. It requires effort. You don't just wake up and do nothing and get to be happy. You have to be really, really intentional on identifying not just things that make you feel good in the moment, but things that actually recharge you, right? So you're not operating from moment to moment, more like period to period. And so when I was there, like, I didn't, I've traveled by myself for business many times, but like yeah. leisure, no plans. Nobody's here waiting for me to see me with an agenda. Yeah. It was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, yeah. no, no friends, no family, no significant other, just me. Um, this was a first for me and this I need regularly. This is important to the quality of my life. Yeah. And I will do this no matter what quarterly at least. And we'll start with quarterly and see, you know, um, I learned in network marketing that you build your business from event to event. So Super Saturday to Super Saturday, conference to conference. And you'd have people who have these major growth spurts between events from event to event. So I'm treating my life the same, um, you know, refueling myself from quarter to quarter, yeah. solo trip to solo trip. And just doing this, I'm, I'm excited. I wonder for a new budding entrepreneur, though. If they should apply this strategy, because in the early years, and I mean, even now, I suppose it hasn't been a lot of battery recharge and hasn't been a lot of clearing my head. It's like work, 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 work. And I wonder if that work, 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 work is what allows you to one day take a step back and say, okay, now I need to charge my battery. Yeah. I mean, I still work, 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 work. I went to a clarity trip and work. And work, right? absolutely. But it was on my terms. It was, um, I still work, work, work. But the thing is, the work that I do is work that brings me joy and makes me feel fulfilled. But even with that said, to answer your question, for the new entrepreneur, I say yes, like, no matter what stage of success you've reached, you can't pour from an empty cup. And so while at the beginning, I, think I did a lot of empty cup pouring. Yeah, I, I did a lot of, of I, I, I don't think I poured, I was depleted. Like I left everything out there over and over and over again. And in the beginning, recharging might look different. It might be when you finally get to go on a couple's date. It might be when you finally get to get a little bit of sleep, mm. right? Um, it might be just you taking a drive for 15 minutes, like, let me just zone out for a minute. So recharging may look different. I'm not suggesting that you take a quarterly trip for four days, you yeah. know, by yourself in the beginning because you just, most people can't do that. I guess. Yeah, you're right. I guess. So everyone needs to recharge their battery. It just looks different, it looks different. Um, with as you grow. I remember my recharge would be, Friday night, I would just take myself to a restaurant. Yeah. I would want to go to a restaurant just like popping a little bit, maybe some music, maybe someone would recognize me. I was, you know, I really oh like that. Um, but like that was just me, and I'll get what I want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not like I'm going to go to Olive Garden and just get right. salad. Like I'm going to a nice restaurant and I'm going to take myself. The bill might be a hundred bucks at that you. point. And I'm like, just for me. Yeah. And that's what recharging looks like. Cause some people will look at your trip and say, Oh, well I need that. Well, maybe you haven't earned that just yet. You might not have earned that. Yeah. Small yeah. little recharges in the battery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys are thinking about how you recharge your battery. Okay, we've got it. We got to like think. I, now that you say it like that, it is vitally important. You have to recharge your battery. I used to do that too. Um, earlier in my entrepreneur days, I would just so before I really had like serious entrepreneur friends, mm -hmm. I've always had friends who wanted to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about serious entrepreneur friends. This is lifestyle for you. You're right. actually building something. Before I had that, um, it was difficult when I needed to recharge. I didn't want to go into the environments with like people who were half in half out mm -hmm. because they didn't really understand the pressures that I was under. So I would go to restaurants by myself and I'm talking about 
Give me the appetizer, the entree, the dessert. I'll take the bottle of wine. I can only do two glasses, but I really want to see a bottle of wine sitting on my table today. <laughs> like, it was just really about me. You know what else I learned about recharging? What's that? I used to think that my self-care days, which I had all wrong, they are not self-care days whatsoever, were my recharge. Getting my nails done, getting my hair done, I thought those days were like, oh, I get to recharge. They're not? For no, the hairdresser ain't comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, ha- the hair, the, going to the salon, you know, there. I, I've been to some salons where the experience is really serene, but you're still like under the pressure of being somewhere on time and people wanting to talk and all this stuff. And the people at the nail salon are the least serene (laughs) people. You know, this is not a self care. This is a maintenance experience experience. This is not self care. Mm. So I encourage you ladies take the hair salon and your nails appointment off your self care. That's maintenance. Self care is what you're doing to pour into you and show your internal self kind of some love uh, so that you have the gas that you need to keep going. You know what self-care looks like for me? Nothing on my schedule for a period of time. Mm-hmm. Like no expectations, no, I got to have this meeting. I got to do this call. People are like, yo, what you doing? Come, and, and my answer is just no. And sometimes I can be in the studio. And like, so I this this past weekend, I've just been thinking of, I, I can't stop thinking about the building out of the office and we're like moving stuff around and doing all kinds of stuff, right? And I can't, January 1st, I came into the studio and it was just me and I'm putting stuff together mm-hmm. and it felt so good. I'm talking about, this was like 8.30 in the morning too. I got up at like maybe like seven something, um, got myself together and I think I I was here by like 8.30, 8.45 and I'm just putting my office together. Yeah. No, the first thing I did, because on, on that Friday, I bought a PlayStation 5. I bought that joint. And there's only one game I would play. It's 2K. I played a basketball game. I came in, and I just played it. Okay. That game lasts 30 minutes. And I'm like, dang, I'm playing a basketball game. I'm playing, like, a PlayStation. This is good. And now I started, like, like organizing my, my office. And then um, I was just there. Reese, was that the day you came in? Did you come in? The Sunday, and believe it or not, yeah, yo, believe it or not, so he came to help, and it was a no, he just came, and I guess you know he was he was like helping, but it actually ruined my self care experience he, <laughs> because when he's here, like now we're working. Now you have somebody to answer to and to consider for sure. That's so important, like self care, um, and being around people is a different kind of care, but mm-hmm. self care requires that. You are selfish with your time and your output and your input and all that stuff. Like really reconsider. Think about what you're calling self-care right now and ask yourself, like, after this, do I feel recharged? Not just do I feel pretty because I just got my hair done or fly because I got my nails done, but do I feel recharged? Self-care is often not like going to brunch with your girls. Mm -hmm. We think it is. That's an experience. That's maintenance of your friendship. But Self-care is not going to lunch or brunch with other people. Self-care is about self, right? Being with yourself, sitting with yourself, learning yourself so that you can stay on track with your happiness. And I think one of my self-cares is doing work just in a more comfortable environment. Goodness gracious, the feeling of having mad stuff to do. That's why, like, at first when you were saying it, I'm like, yo, you're a worker. But then I started thinking about it like, yo, that is ultimate self-care. It's all these things on your plate that you got to do. But as you're working, more stuff gets on your plate. Mm-hmm. And the original stuff on your plate, you didn't finish that, but like more important stuff or seemingly more important stuff is now on the forefront. You got to do it. Yeah. And maybe the things that you were supposed to do aren't dire, but they are in the back of your mind. Like it's another thing that has to happen, right? Right. And being able to relax and be like, yo, don't take your laptop on vacation. I did that one time. I was miserable. Yeah. You're anxious. And it's just mad stuff piling up. So I know I got to get back to mad stuff piled up. Well, and there's the other thing. So the reason for the work, when you go on these excursions by yourself or whatever it is that you're doing, 
you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you've had this phenomenal experience and then you're walking back into chaos. Mm -hmm. That was really important to me. Like I did not want to end my year in flow and start the year in frenzy. So it was super important for me to figure out how to get the things done that were important that allowed me to stay on track. But these were not things that required that I reach out to any of my team members or clients or customers. They're just what does Donnie need to do to make sure that you set yourself up to walk back into the year? Things are going well. This feeling that you feel right now, you can maintain when you get back. You're not walking back into chaos. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. Man, systems are self-care. Systems are self-care. Oh my gosh. I, I just got the realization. Systems are self-care because if you don't have them, then you're stressed out, you're frustrated, mm -hmm. right? Getting a house cleaner is self-care. Yeah. Why? Because you're cleaning up the house and like you come home, you're anxi your anxiety, you're worried. When you get home, you got to clean up things of that nature. Like we were supposed to have a, um, and we have a house cleaner, but uh, maybe they need to come more often. But uh, my wife texted me and said, hey, can we watch a movie tonight? I'm like, sure. Just, you know, we just need to spend intentional time together. So I'm like, all right, cool. But by the time I get home, just make sure Soraya sleep. Soraya sleep by the time I get home. Because I was going to get home like 10 o'clock because I went to like a Bible study or something like that. And I like, just make sure Soraya sleep. Because if she's not, it's up. You hear me? It is up. So I come home. And the first person I see is Sarah. Hey, daddy. I'm like, <laughs> hey, what's up, baby? Um, and then I go upstairs and Dre is cleaning the room. So we obviously couldn't have uh, um, kind of like our intentional time together. But let's say, for instance, there were some sort of system and I had, you know, maybe my cleaner comes more. Then we can have time where we're just chilling, enjoying each other. But because I don't have that system in place where they come more than, I think they come like once a week or something like that. And I got mad people in my house. Mm -hmm. It's mad people in my house. Dre's parents are still here too. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's me, Dre, Dre's parents, her, her dad and her mom, Sarai and Psalm and Corey, Corey little friends be coming through. Just mad humans. I don't know where I was going with that, but. The house needs people. to be clean more often. The house needs to be clean more often. Mm -hmm. And, um, like for, oh, and, and here's another thing. If I think stress for an entrepreneur comes from anxiety and workload. For sure. And if we identify a system that helps us with the workload, then we'd have a lot less stress and that self-care. Here's one simple system. You're thinking, let's say as a content creator or a podcaster, when am I going to like shoot these podcasts? And people just shoot their podcasts whenever they can shoot their podcasts. A form of self-care is what we're doing right now. Every Wednesday we shoot. Yeah. I know that on Wednesday, one part of our load is taken care of because we have a system of a day that we've created to shoot. So you might have a production day or you might have a, a day where you make all your sales calls. These systems are self-care. So important. So important. And they provide so much clarity. When you have systems in place, it gives you the ability to think. Mm -hmm. People think that systems are just like technology. It's something that you log on to a computer for. And that's not the truth. Like you have systems at home. You have an alarm that if you remember to set it, it makes you sleep well at night or you leave your home and you feel like your home is safe. Systems are also routine. It's us coming every single Wednesday. It's me committing to not even just committing to uh, traveling every other month by myself. I'm sorry, once a quarter just to get away. It's also me saying, okay, let me make sure that's in place. So I have a travel agent and I say, hey, 
if you have a quarter, usually my calendar is not booked out a quarter in advance, right? So just go ahead and pick the date and let's make it happen. Here are the days that I prefer to travel so I don't have to worry about it. And then the quarter passes and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't take my trip because I wasn't plugged into my own system. So system is not just routine. I'm sorry, it's not just technology. It's also routine and things that you're doing over and over consistently in a measurable way so that you can get a result. All right, man. I'm yo, this is a breakthrough for me. Um, I think if I had to like put my own little philosophy on it is that stress equates to more things to think about and self-care is less things to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Self-care is less things to think about. Yeah. So if I have to think about cleaning my room or which day I'm going to record or what day I'm going to batch content or, um, or, you know, how I'm going to get this thing done. So my man Marcus came through, I just hired another assistant and there's a system of booking where I'm thinking I got to promote and then book, get some traffic in. Then I send them an invoice, things of that nature. So we put this whole system together in HoneyBook and it feeds to peer space and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that has been a stressor for me because I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. So it's still, it's just mad stuff for me to think about on how to book and schedule appointments. But I felt like a load off of my back when they both sat here and they worked through the system and I'm understanding it. And I'm like, oh, wow. So when they click this link and they fill this out, it goes to this email. Um, Kay will catch the email. She'll call the person or she'll, you know, she'll figure out exactly what they want and then book it. I'm like, wow, we'll be able to make some money. And that's one less thing for me to think about. Mm -hmm. And I instantly started having a happier day. Yeah which was crazy. That was just one thing off of my plate. So we need to figure out like, what are all the things that we think about on it? Cause that is stress. It is stressful. I know that, I mean, just, you've had a couple of small wins uh, right here, including figuring out how to book the space. Mm -hmm. So I need the link because you know, my clients want to book the space yes. uh, next Saturday, I believe. Creatorsclubhouse.com. Hold on. Let me see. Let me, I got to think about the website. It's either creators clubhouse or the creators clubhouse.com. Let me do a little, TheCreatorsClubhouse.com. TheCreatorsClubhouse.com. TheCreatorsClubhouse.com yes. to book this lovely studio. Yes. You know, I just noticed with our new um, situation, we can't see the sign. Oh, we've never been able to see the sign. We have been able to see Ever. the sign. We haven't? Not one time. We have seen the sign. Yes. Never. We've seen the sign. Not one episode. Is it on the thumbnail? Nope. It's not even on the thumbnail. I'm going to show it to you. Not one. I'm going to show Reese? it to you. Not one ever. Reese, we've, we've never, never had this sign here ever, because then we'd have to like shoot it out so far, and it'd be mad space of our above our head. We've never ever. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> why have I always felt like this? Something else was going on here. We're always oh, trying to figure out okay. this. Oh, okay, maybe it's this plant that's I don't know. Anyway, awkwardly placed. This plastic plant. Somebody please deliver us fresh flowers every yeah, Wednesday morning. We need like some sort of, we need a centerpiece because this is dumb. <laughs> this is crazy. We do. Now I, can, and now I gotta take it down because you guys are gonna focus on the plant. For the rest of the episode. Um, no, but if you don't get your old water, that's probably not even any good anymore down. Um, you have your assistant in place now. Mm -hmm. Is that providing you some relief? Is it relief yet? Or are you still kind of in training? It's not relief yet. It's still training. But one less thing I have to think about is all the stuff that I have to think about to figure out. Mm -hmm. So we need like water and snacks. It's one thing I have to think about. But now it's one thing for her to think about. And mm -hmm. it gives her an opportunity to kind of get the system down. So is she responsible for making sure I had this here today? Did she do that? Did she do that? And did she do I it? I believe so. Yeah, because I did. Didn't. Reese didn't do it. Reese, did you do it? Shout out to Kay. Shout out to Kay. For the record, I hired Kay. You did? Yeah. And I think Don't she's be awesome. telling all my back end business. I, look, and for the record, for the stop David. Stop trying to get the, clout for, for my the David Shan, For the David Shans <laughs> organization, okay? I did his hiring. I've done some firing. I've written. No, I'm just playing. I no, did, though. That, I did. Yeah. I did. I, and I enjoyed the, Put the water down. What you mean? I'm People taking need the water to know. from you. you know, it's been five days. You had not drank it yet. You don't need it. 
Um, yeah, it's I, I was <laughs> in all, my every time I'm carrying the water, be like, Oh, you drinking a gallon of water? I'm like, eh, Yes, I am actually. <laughs> Just not today. Not today. Not all today. Just not today. I'm going to finish it by the end of this episode. Good thing. When you're ready, when you're no, thirsty. I'm going to finish it right now. Right now. Are you going to put it back right No, here? I'm not going to put it back in there. I won't. I won't. I promise. But I do want to start drinking it because I want to finish it. Come on. Don't like take me off my health journey. I'm already not going to the gym. Have you quit the gym already? Absolutely. <laughs> I haven't started though for the year, for the new year. Ah! You know what's crazy? So I want to like go into the gym for the new year, but I don't want to go in there because people looking at me like, oh, yeah, here he go. Like, he's you're the, embarrassed. You're yeah, now just judge. your new year, you'll be out by February. And but even the though truth. they're right, it is. I mean, you, I don't want to be I don't want to be grouped with the people that's going to the gym the first year and going to quit for February. So you'd rather be the man who goes in October and just quit in November? I'd rather go in February and quit in March. <laughs> but, you know, now is a good time to start getting this uh, this summer body together. You should. I normally don't think about it till March until I go to the pool and I'm like, dang. Can't take your shirt off. Yeah. But you do take your shirt off anyway. You don't care who. I'm not going to wear a t-shirt in the pool. That looks weird. It's just not attractive. I'm not like, it's not bad body. It's just not amazing. Let me say this. It's bad. There's a difference between people are going to be mad at me for saying this. Like there's what society considers in shape, Right. And then there's what society considers overweight. And both of those things are fine, right? If you're, you know, the F word, it, what people would call fat, I think it's fine. If you're what people would call thin, I think it's fine. If you're in between, I think it's fine. But it's like that sloppy part, right? Where you're like supposed to be skinny, but you just letting yourself go. I'll fight you right now. <laughs> I will fight you in front of all these people. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that part where you supposed to you know what I mean and then you just kind of like sponge bobbing your way so you're like either go either way you either go be slim or you're right, gonna... what, what, pick one like choose one what are we doing either go all in with fine or go all in with you know being whatever size you want to be just go all in you can't keep teetering on the, on the fence <laughs> like the middle stage where you're trying to grow braids yes <laughs> you look crazy yo I hate that stage <laughs> I have a friend, so I have this guy friend who I've known for years, and he's always been like super low cut. How do you handle this? So I have this guy friend. He's really, really sweet. He's always been like super clean cut, and he's going through something. He's like forty three, and now he's got these little twists in his head. And every time I see him, these twists are getting like longer, but they're little inchworms, right? And I know maybe that's the that's the stage before you go full throttle like dreads. But it's that in between. You're you're 40, you're 43, 44 years old. Like, where are we going with this? Your hairline is already receding. Like, why are we growing our hair out at the what do you say? Mm. Like, that just don't he's, look good. He's got vision. So here's my motivational speech. You are in between right now. <laughs> okay. You're trying to get something going. You got a little something happening. You feel, you feel that you are going to be extremely successful, but it just hasn't happened. You got to stay right there until your braids grow longer. Mm-hmm. It's one day, one day, you're going to be able to do this. <laughs> and it's going to be up. You'll be able to shake them braids, but you got to go through, you got to go through that little phase. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. <laughs> Make sure that's one of the clips that we pull for the episode for sure. But what about those entrepreneurs that are on the brink, man? Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast, but I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby, but I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000 my ebook is only 37 bucks. Okay. So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail all the things that you need. Okay. Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. Yo, this, this is a question I want to ask too. When do you actually quit? 
Is there is there an appropriate time to quit? Um, yes. How do you know though? There is an appropriate time. It's so time hard to, quit. to tell. It's really hard to tell. And I am not a quitter, so it's possible that I don't know the appropriate time to quit. You will never get into that iPad. I'm not gonna try and get into it. That's oh, not it how it goes. It does stay up, but that's not how it works. Yeah, it does. Um Anyway, I, I don't I'm not really a quitter. I have statistically quit way later than I should have. Right? There are some things that I probably should have stopped before I made the decision to stop. And I, you know, it, you, when you're an entrepreneur, you just have to ask yourself questions like is this costing me more than it's paying me and it might not be monetarily right mm -hmm. um are you really there are some people who have the story of i was willing to lose it all you mm -hmm. know for my dream everybody's not willing to lose it all for your dream so maybe set some parameters like in our investment account there are um what's called stop losses which means that when you invest a hundred dollars, say you have a stop loss set that says, okay, I am willing to lose up to $40. If I lose $40, quit, <laughs> like stop. Maybe a good idea is to figure out what your stop loss is as an entrepreneur. What are you willing to risk? What are you willing to lose? What are you willing to never get back um, before you have to say, for now, I need to quit. That's tough, though, darling. It's so tough because it's you could not... Be right there on the break. You could through. be right there. Like, it's so tough, and it's so hypocritical of me to say because I'm not doing that. I'm going all in. Right, right, right. right. I am going... Like, I have learned about myself. I know when I know. And, like, once I've declared something, it's going to happen. It's a matter of time. So the journey might not look easy. So I'll say, oh, once I once I declare and affirm it, I know it's going to happen. Well, there may be a lot of bumps in the road along the way, a lot of obstacles and objections and people who are saying I shouldn't do things. I might even fall completely off, but I still know like my mental fortitude is just so strong and I'm so convicted in my beliefs. I know. So I don't I don't go. I don't stop. But I've already decided that. I'm a risk taker. I've already decided that it it doesn't make me happy to quit and to not know. It's it's that like, what if I was almost there feeling for me that that I can't do. But if I had to give other people, I've also lost everything living that way, right? I've mm -hmm. also put myself in very high risk situations living that way. And I believe that it depends on the person. Like ask yourself, how much are you willing to lose? How easily or quickly can you rebound if you are a person that if tremendous loss will have you second guessing your own life mm -hmm. you need a stop loss in place yeah. there needs to be a moment of quit <laughs> for yeah, you for, for sure. sure but if you are somebody who can take a punch and keep on going and take keep taking the punches yeah make it happen i think one thing that's really helped me is i'm not focused on getting there i'm more focused on being here in terms of the the moment that i'm in right now i'm comfortable so while i was selling t-shirts it was like okay i want to i want to make more money but i am so happy in this process mm. and if we're looking at life as a a, a, a canvas to paint on Right. I, I know, and I had this realization earlier, uh, earlier in my career, that every single thing that happened to me in a negative light has produced something greater. Yeah. Not even maybe a tangible outcome, but if I didn't learn that lesson, I wouldn't be able to operate in the way that I'm operating now. So I'm not focused on getting there, right? Getting to 100 million. It's a goal for sure, but I'm... I'm so happy in the process of learning every single day and building every single day. And when viewership goes down, it's not like, wow, I need to quit this thing. 
I'm I'm in the moment right now to say, okay, here's our challenge on figuring out how to get the viewership back up. Here's what, okay, there's something broken in my business. Let me fix the broken, not for the fact that it's going to help me get somewhere, mm -hmm. but I want to be the type of person that can fix some things and be a fixer of things. You know what I mean? So what's, what's, I'm developing myself along this journey and enjoying the ride. And I'm not just saying it from the position that I'm at now. When I was working at the Cheesecake Factory, I was so happy to go to work and sell a few t-shirts. I was just happy. Actually, my most successful year financially was my saddest. It sounds weird especially if you haven't like you, you see a goal, but when I was at my brokest, I was my happiest. Damn. Talk about that all the time. Remember I tell the story, like when I lost everything financially and tangible around me, I was sincerely a happy person. I remember moving back in with my mom and I lost everything, like everything house foreclosed on cars, repossessed everything. Yeah. I'm moving back in with my mom and me and my daughter are sharing my old childhood bedroom. And one day my mom walks out of her bedroom and walks past mine. And I am in there like looking at TV or something and I'm laughing. And she stops in front of my room and she's like, I just don't understand what you have to laugh about in your situation. And I'm like, well, what good is it going to do for me to be sitting in here sad and crying about it? Like, I lost things. I didn't lose me. I still have you. I still have Dej. I still have myself. I was genuinely happy, but also just like you, my most successful year financially was my least happiest year of my life. I share it with my family. Like, I don't think I've ever experienced depression in my life. I've experienced sadness. I know what it's like to be brokenhearted, but I'm, I've always been like the kind of person that could be sad about something but I still feel an internal happiness. I can be, I can have a broken heart, but I still feel an internal happiness. It was just, I understood it was situational, but last year was just heavy. I was, your girl was, I, I never want to feel <laughs> like that again, like ever. And I don't know, you know, I don't think that this trip just reset in a way that that disappears, but it's definitely given me a new appreciation of things to be grateful for. It's definitely given me a new burst of energy and, and like I'm ready to get back in there and fight some more. I'm ready to fight this misery that I had been feeling or this, you know, and it's internal. There was no reason for it. I couldn't understand it. So it was heavy and scary for the first, like, I just understand. So I understand what people are going through. Like that guy, Twitch, um, committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And every shot you see of him, he's happy. Yeah. And he was known, everybody said he was known for making others happy. He would just call you randomly, text you hap randomly and check on your happiness. And here is somebody who carries that type of calling on their life because that's a calling, right? To be in that and the whole world feels this from you. And he takes his own life. Um, I think it's a selfish thing to do to For take sure. your life. Right. I think, and, and, you know, the comments go crazy. There's not, there's, there's no chance of that for me. I didn't feel like that, but I did feel a level of understanding for people who was, who were misunderstood, yeah. meaning the whole world misunderstood that that man was suffering yeah. on the inside. Right. Maybe his family knew or didn't know, but the world misunderstood what he was presenting. They say that the loudest people are the saddest people. Mm -hmm. And he was loud, yeah. you know, and I'm not talking about volume. He was loud. He was seen, he was out there, he was visible. Um, so, you know, you, you really, really, really have to check in with people, but also check in with yourself and be real with yourself. I, I, and to this day, I don't understand it, Dave. Like, I had everything to be just on top of the world and joyful for everything was going perfectly. Everything was going right. And there wasn't a happening. Nothing happened necessarily. Like we can trace the beginning of your unhappiness for me. It's just like 
what happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what am I? Why do I feel like this? But we are on the other side. We are feeling good, at least today. And that's the other thing. Like I said earlier, happiness is intentional. Joy is intentional. And you have to, if you do, if you go too long without doing these things that make you feel good and doing things that bring you real internal joy, it gives the devil and all of his, his work time to infiltrate your system and break you and, you know, make you second guess things that you shouldn't be second guessing and feeling ways that you wouldn't normally feel. There's no reason for this. You're tougher than this. You're stronger than this. You were happier than this. So look, that's that, that self-care. I'm so glad we're starting the year off in this conversation because before you before you set a goal, before you start doing the work and you've broken your annual goal down into monthly goals and then weekly goals and before you do that, like check on the status of yourself. Yeah. We know where you financially finished off last year and where you want to go financially, right? We know how your team finished off and where you want your team to grow. We know what systems you were lacking last year in your business and what systems you intend to set. But where did you finish off last year and where are you now and where do you want to be? And let's create some metrics there that measure along the way monthly, just like you do every other goal, create some metrics there that allow you to check in with yourself and make sure you're on track. Yeah. I, I, I want everybody that's listening, man. And even y'all that's here and it sounds so cliche and most people just because you, you want something greater but you really should sit back and enjoy this journey because it, it's something about having something to aspire towards. And if you don't have it, it gives you a reason for waking up and going after it. Right. They say you shouldn't meet your, your idols because you have this, this perception of them in your head. And it's like, Oh my gosh, they're inspiration they're motivational. But if you meet them in person and the experience isn't the same. It's like, dang. I, th the person that I loved so much or admired so much, once I got to meet them, it wasn't, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Mm. Or if you have not had a million dollar year yet, right? I'm yeah. asking you to just <clears throat> hold on to the feeling of going after it. Because what if your whole life or the, the next 10 years, you're focused on becoming a multimillionaire and the idea that you have in your head of what a multimillionaire looks like is different than what it actually is. So what if you're spending your whole life getting to this status and you get there, it is not what you thought it was going to be. Where do you go now? Mm. Like, what do you aspire to now? Like, what is it? What's the next silver lining? It's not more money. What do you aspire to now? Or somebody that's my only desire ever since I was a little girl, I just want to get married. I just want to, I see this whole dream and this man and this, the, the kids and the house. And like, yo, I know my life would be so complete if I just got that. But what happens when you get it and it's not fulfilling you? You spent your whole life. Mm chasing the expectation of something but when you got it it didn't meet the expectation now what do you chase you have no more chase in you you have no more ambition so whatever it is you guys are going for enjoy the journey of going for it and don't be so caught up in having it because you don't know what comes with that yeah. something comes with the having of the thing Okay, this this perfect person that you you love and the dates are amazing and once the relationship gets serious and you get married, they change totally. Now you're locked in. But you didn't know what was supposed to come with that. But if you're focused on happiness, all the stuff around you, it all kind of seems the same. The ups, the downs, the highs, the lows. I'm happy. So I'll take the this thing that I got didn't make me happy. But this thing that that hit me it make me sad. Yeah. It's just a part of this life that I created. So mm -hmm. I think even in that, uh, that depression year that, that I went through, I think I lost sight of that mm -hmm. because now it's about maintaining the thing that you got Yeah, and not losing it. I'd rather not have it and try to go after it than get it and be the anxiety of not losing it. Cause now I got to get my house bulletproof. I got to make sure I'm always with somebody. I got to make sure I'm protected. I'm always looking over my shoulder. I, 
That's not the life I desire to live. It's not. And it's not. You know what's crazy is um, we are not celebrities at all, right? Mm. You a celebrity? David sat no. back like. I'm for sure not a celebrity. Say that about yourself. It makes me feel good. It makes you feel good when people notice you, though, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. Though. So in the network marketing industry years, you know, that, that I spent there 2012 to 20. 18, I was like in my company, a celebrity in my company, right? Everybody knew me. Everybody uh, wanted to be mentored by me and trained by me. So when you would walk into these events, it's like, oh my God, Donnie Wiggins is going to be there. And I'm, I'm used to that feeling. I've kind of always been that person whenever I get into something. And so the feeling of people like knowing me, he, oh, but when you step out, when I stepped outside of network marketing, it's like nobody knew me. When I left that convention and went to the mall or wherever, it was just I could go by myself and it's just me again. Nobody knows me. And it was like at that time, it was a reality check. Like, get your weight up, Donnie. Don't nobody know. you. <laughs> Ain't nobody messing with you like that. Right now with the podcast, we've amassed like a million followers plus or, or downloads plus a month. This is a lot of people watching your show from all over the world. It's not restricted to your city or the city that your company operates in. This is like one person could know you everywhere. And still, like I imagine, and, and I didn't necessarily realize that I was signing up for that, right? Um, no issue with being known, grateful for it, blessed. And I'm, I'm glad that people connect and resonate with us. But I started to think about celebrities because you hear people say all the time, oh, you signed up for it. You do these movies, you signed up for it. And I have experienced some things that I absolutely didn't sign up for. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize it would be like a factor. Like simply I told you last year about the guys, the guy and the girl who pulled up next to me at the red light. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're following me. And I'm noticing this car is just following me. And it didn't feel dangerous but you're following me, yeah. right? And so I w I'm not sure, so I pull off into this crowded parking lot. They pull off too, and I'm like, oh, what's going on here? Hand on one thing, you know uh, what I mean? Uh, foot uh, on uh, the other thing. And the guy gets out of the car, and he's like motioning me to roll my window down. And I'm like, what do I do? Because damned if you do, damned if you don't. They might get mad that you don't roll the window down. So I crack my window, and he's like, Donnie Wiggins, my girlfriend saw you in the car and she just wants to get a picture with you, you know? And I'm like, sure, I got out of the car and I took the picture and it was sweet and it was innocent and nothing was wrong with it. But what happens when it's not sweet and when it's not innocent? And so, you know, you're thinking about um, being by yourself. Like I never thought that doing the podcast with you would make me question, should I go here by myself? Should I be in this space by myself. Like I never imagined being the person who like, I just want to run in the mall real quick and look tore up, like mm -hmm. busted, <laughs> but I can't right. really. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> now sure. I'm the person with the glasses and the hat and the mm -hmm. hoodie on, you know, just I, all I want to do is go re up on my perfume for tomorrow. Yeah. Like that's all I want to do. Right. Um, it's, it's an interesting dynamic and I am grateful and appreciating and learning through it all. But I can't help but to wonder what A-list celebrities experience if at oh. just this level. Like, I only have, like, 50-something thousand followers on Instagram. Probably have a lot more if I weren't hacked. But the reality is that's what I have. But the podcast gets so much reach that's not in our community that we don't even know about. These are people who will never follow us yeah. on social media. It's, you know, when somebody's looking at you now, it's like, you know who I am and everywhere. It's just, it's, it's, it's a paranoia. Um, but it, it, it also feels good when we look at these people who are just miserable and unhappy in their lives and celebrities, I kind of get it. Like they have, there is no escape for them. Yeah. Like they're restricted to everything requires a production for them to move discreetly. Yeah. You know, and that's gracious. They, like, they can't really experience the world. They can yeah. only experience like their world, like their bubble. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm glad we're in the space that we're in education, not like necessarily entertainment. Yeah. 
Because education, you might see somebody and it's like, thank you. Yes. You've helped me. Yes. Right? So that's not, it's not like, it's not like um, scary celebrity or like you got to walk through with security like mm-hmm. that because people are just going to thank you a lot. You feel me? Well, we see a lot of people in this space that are walking with security. Yeah, for sure. But on yes. the flip side of that, we are social proof of success and people think that we're walking around with cash and they see us talking about you know watches and things so you you still have to be just a little True. like we have many friends that are walking around with security one yeah. of our friends um lives in houston he drives like luxury cars i think he was in his ferrari that day his arm out his window mm-hmm. roly popping and he's leaving an event he's leaving an event that he had just like spoken at or something Thankfully, there's another car with his friends um, behind him and he pulls up at a light or he pulls up somewhere. I don't get me wrong. He pulls up somewhere and these guys get out of the car to rob him mm. right in his car. His friends behind him immediately get out. With these, they're trying to rob him at gunpoint. His friends behind him immediately get out with guns and he's in the middle of a shootout. Now he's in his Rolls Royce because he tells me he jumps over the seat. He's like ducked down. They're shooting back and forth. He's not strapped, but his friends behind him in another car are. He is in education. All he does is helps people make money. But there are people who were looking for him to be at a specific place and time and were waiting for him to leave to rob him. But that's the thing. Helping people make money. Mm -hmm. We have not necessarily built a brand around helping people make money. We help people become better people in this podcast space. In this business podcast coach, right? space. But I, I, me personally, <laughs> I've been, I've been careful not to, uh, to associate my brand with a lot of money anymore. I've never really been that. I've, 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 I, anyone that's ever followed my career, it's been community. Yeah. I want you to connect with other people. I want you, I want you to be a better person. I mean, I haven't necessarily taught, okay, if you do, let me show you how you can make, um, I don't know, $10,000 this month or whatever. Now I have some strategies and things, but the centerpiece of the brand isn't, if you connect with this person, they're going to help you make money. So let me ask you this. Um, This is what, you know, people walk up. First of all, you guys, Nobody knows me far as great as they know this guy. We were in Houston's restaurant Mm. last week, week before, something like that. And we're waiting for our table. We're about to have our meeting. And me and David are standing. My back is to the door. David is standing in front of me. And this guy comes from behind me. Soon as he enters the door and he's like, yo, man, I'm a fan, man. I watch your show, all of them, every single time. Like, thank you for what you're doing for the community and blah, 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 blah. And I'm standing there. You know, this happens all the time. And Dave, we're both like dying laughing on the inside, right? The guy walks away and says nothing to me. And he, David says, what do you want me to do in this moment? Like, do you want me to be like, yo, and here's Donnie. I don't want you to do that at all. Mm. I don't, I don't want you to do it at all. I'm totally fine with it. But at this level of where we are right now, how do you, how do you handle it when it, when it doubles? Well, the thing is, I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying where we are before. And I don't, I don't know if like education celebrities will get the whole I mean we get it somewhat but we are education celebrities I think I'm just tiny I mean on a on a (laughs) on a small level we're like we're like e-list think about this think about this think about this let's say take me off the list if I gotta be e (laughs) okay think about this so Jim Rohn yeah back in the day did he need like massive security no You like you'll say, yo, Jeb, yo, you taught me so much, man. It wasn't the centerpiece wasn't money. Mm -hmm. Right. Nowadays, if you're building a brand around education, the education follows the money. If you do what I'm saying, you'll make X amount of dollars. Well, I don't think, and you are a business coach, but 
we do a lot of stuff that make people feel good. For sure. Not not just like you think of me, this person helps you make money. There was a, a list that went around and I felt the way. They said, yo, you have to make $10,000 tomorrow. Who you calling? And I just wasn't on the list, right? But then I thought about it. I'm like, yo, I'm glad people don't look at me as the person who can help them make money. I want to make people feel good. I want to like connect other people. I want like I my objective is to help so many people that if 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 anyone ever tried to cancel me for something, there's gonna be somebody say, nah, 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 nah. Impossible. Impossible. Or they gonna be fighting with you in the comments. Like, nah, he a real dude. Like he said for the morning meetup, $79 for a call, but he lets us come in the studio and just hang out. Oh, he's give us QA. He promoted me. He connected me with somebody. Like I want like that to happen but i'm just enjoying it not necessarily anticipating the higher level but i'm enjoying the fact that every now and again i can get a an injection of hey you helped me makes yeah. me feel good not the whole restaurant right yeah obviously when it gets bigger i'm like i don't know what to do about that but yeah i'm enjoying the journey yeah i remember seeing uh one of my former pastors this was years ago in a longhorn steakhouse and um, we had just left church and he, me and Deja are there and he walks in and Deja loved this pastor. And she's like, mommy, can I go speak? And I'm like, no, you know, just let him kind of eat his food. Well, this other, other people started coming in and they're seeing him and they're like, oh my God, pastor, they're at the table. They want to take a picture. And for a minute he was doing it, but you could see just not even the look of disgust on his face his family, right? Like his children, they're trying to color with them. They were playing like the little tic, uh, tic-tac-toe game, tic-tac-toe game on the kids menu. And the people who he was with, his family were just so disappointed. Well, someone later wrote some kind of blog article online talking about they saw him and he wasn't friendly. Um, you know, people wanted to show him love and he wasn't friendly. And I, and, and, I didn't think that because I saw how it happened from the beginning, but I get how you just wanting to be by yourself in public can turn into something completely different and people can totally misunderstand you to your point about having people fight for us in the comments. So uh, there was a situation that happened um, with some friends of ours that were kind of going back and forth online. And this blogger wrote about one of those people and were just like eating them up. Right. Mm. And this is a really big blog. The blog used to be focused on uh, celebrities who were dating. And then you go to this blog to put your, like you put your man name in there to see what people are saying about him, right? <laughs> well, now they do that in the entrepreneur space because that's mm -hmm. what's being talked about. So you could search all these entrepreneurs and they're talking about, oh, this person is great or this person is a scam or whatever. I'm like, I wonder what they're saying about us. Mm -hmm. So I searched my name. I searched your name. I, I searched this. There? Yes, we're on What's there. The I'm not saying, I'm not giving them credit because the blog is trash. Is it? Is the blog we're is, on there? We're on there. But we are on there. Somebody says, what do y'all think about this David and this Donnie guy? I mean, yeah, this this Donnie and this David guy, like, what's up with them? Because there's this whole conversation. There's this whole conversation that is catered to identifying scams or cheaters or things like that. So somebody was like, what do y'all think about this David and this Donnie? And and people were on there saying, oh, they're official. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we yeah. made it. <laughs> Don't call this blog out. Okay, I won't. But it's a blog about, so you can search anybody's name on there? Yeah, that's so this blog has been around since social media, as far as really? I know, right, came out. And it used to be where girls, women would go to find out if their guy is cheating or, you know, had another family or something like that. Like you just go there, you search their name. If there's a conversation, cool. If there's not a conversation, you like, thank God his yeah. name is not on this blog. Oh, wow. Um, let me see. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, my, mind your, 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 your celebrity, man. There was a, a, a quote that said people spend their whole time, their whole lives wanting to be known. And then when they become known, they wear dark shades and hoodies to avoid being seen. That is such a real thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh oh, 
Okay. But you saw before you clicked into yours, you saw some of the other names that pop up. Like they're they're trying to find the flaw in people who are just we're just doing good stuff. And yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that's, that's that. I thought that was that was super cool. And let me say this. You don't need a large platform to be or feel celebrity in your circle. Right. Like right where you are, some of you, it may be like you're the celebrity of your family. Before I was this E-list celebrity that David has claimed us to be, E-list, I was the sure. celebrity of my family. Like they waiting on me to come for Thanksgiving because I'm about to turn it up. Like I was in that place, in that space where I'm the youngest of the adults, but the oldest of the kids. So, you know, everybody wanted to kind of hang out with me. I didn't get separated at the tables. I'm going back and forth to the tables. I'm like the celebrity of my family, Right. Um, and, and that might be you. And if that is you, you just have to honor and respect this position because it's been given we're on borrowed time and it's the journey. Like David asked earlier, how do you know when to quit? And I think that my answer is that you don't, if you're focused on the journey, right? The end piece that you get may change up. But the journey is representative of the growth that you're experiencing along the way. So if your goal is, if the end result is to be a successful entrepreneur and you define success as somebody who's making $100,000 or a million dollars in a year, right? And today you're doing it through XYZ business model. And XYZ business model, you've tried for three years and it's just not getting you there. You don't quit on the objective of becoming a six or seven figure entrepreneur, maybe you switch the vehicle. So you get out of X, Y, Z business and say, well, let me try one, two, three business. Mm -hmm. If your goal is to be a wife or a husband and this relationship didn't work out, you don't quit on the goal or the desire to become a spouse. You quit that relationship, but the journey toward the goal continues. So you don't really quit. Now you might have to change cars. You might have yeah. to change vehicles. Yeah. But you don't quit on the ultimate goal. And if you start to look at if you start to look at these things that you're doing as final outcome, like the final outcome, then it's not about a person. It's not about a, a the exact business model. Look at all the people who have changed business models and switched it up, right? If you look at the final outcome. It doesn't matter what the details are along the way. It's the journey. And that's the part that you don't quit on. A hundred percent. And there, there's something, there's always something, if you're not getting an outcome, it's like something that you got to fix pretty much. Yeah. It's a tweak. Yeah. I, I think cleaning your house, a five bedroom house is stressful. And I would not advise someone to clean their house. I would advise them to clean a room. Let's just clean a room. Yeah. Let's clean up another one. And eventually Um, If you adopt the philosophy that I'm just going to fix what's broken, I'm going to clean one part of this mess. Um, I think the whole mess takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. So how you you want to be a celebrity? Do you want to be a celebrity? According to you, I'm E-list in the mug. Do you know the more, and I don't know how we hide it, but the more money you make, the more notoriety, the more notoriety, the more money you can make. And with that, you become more and more celebrity. So yeah. are you prepared for that? I am prepared. I am not. Um, as a child, I always wanted to be famous. I thought I would be like a singer or a rapper or an actress. Right. Um, I knew that I would use my voice in some way that would impact the world. I never thought until it became a thing that I would use my voice to impact the world in this way. So the journey I always wanted to be famous and a celebrity and use my voice. I thought it would be through entertaining. And we do educate and entertain here. The vehicle changed. I am not the next Beyonce. I am the next Donnie Wiggins. I am the Donnie Wiggins. And we're creating an impact this way. Yes, drop it. And you are who you are. In fact, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I want you to drop. I am the current, whatever your name is, I am the current Donnie Wiggins. This is the current David Shans. Mm-hmm. And that's all we are trying to be to answer your question. Yes. Like we're going to take this thing up as big as it goes. And we will learn along the way to figure out how life 
fits into all of these and blessings. And be happy along the way. And be happy Let's along the way. Let's enjoy where we are right now. I think the ambition of what's going to, you know, take place in the future kind of steals away from the joy of today. Yeah. But let's enjoy where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. You know, one before we close, one thing that I have to acknowledge that I think makes this so much better is the value of our relationship. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the value of relationships we have with other people. But I can't imagine what people are going through who feel like they have nobody to yeah, talk to. I just can't imagine what you're feeling in. And I'm sorry that, you know, that that is your reality. I encourage everybody, though, to find somebody to talk to. There has been a point in my life where I felt like I didn't have anybody to talk to that had experience with things that I was feeling. And then you end up finding people to talk to because instead of worrying about or focusing my energy on how many people I didn't have to talk to, I focus energy on, man, I got to find people to talk to. And so then I started to attract those people. And then you, the conversations that David and I have are always about life. And it's always about serious things that are happening in our lives or in our business, but it doesn't feel like a pity party. It doesn't feel like a pity pet uh, fest. It doesn't feel like we're getting together and all we're doing is complaining. Like we're literally talking it out and then thinking about, Now, how do we fix it? What solution do you kick into gear? So make sure you're having these kind of responsible conversations. Focus on finding your people, attracting your people to talk to, because we all need things to people to talk to. A lot of the challenges that you're facing and a lot of the unhappiness um, can be helped simply by eating. I'm hangry right now. Getting some (laughs) sleep. Or having somebody to talk to and have an open, sincere conversation with those things, getting some rest, those things will uplift you and change a whole lot about your situation. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So make sure I like subscribe, share this with somebody. Okay. You never know who needs it. Uh, I'm drinking my gallon. Can Hmm? we do, can we throw like a concert? Can we do, we kind of did like a little concert in LA, Um, had Soulja Boy come out for the kids but I mean, we're celebrities at this point. Like, are we, what are he we lives. doing? Are we, he are lives. we producing movies? Are we throwing concerts? Like, is it, are we just going to keep it with the entrepreneurship conferences and things like that? Like, what, what, what are we doing? We are going to do some stuff that makes us happy. Do we have a fan club? Yeah, a little we got bit. A fan club? A little bit. <laughs> we're we're going to do some stuff that makes us happy. Not for the reward of it. Not but for if the you want to shoot a it. movie, let's shoot a movie because it'd be cool to shoot a movie. We talked about that already. Let's shoot the movie. Yeah. Let's put that on second quarter agenda. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Call so, Ernestine. Whatever you're gonna do, do it. Because doing it is gonna be really, really cool. Not for the anticipation of the outcome. Yeah. And it's really, really cool. What we're doing in real time with the Social Proof Podcast is really, really cool. And thank you guys for being a part of it for sure. And what I if I told my y'all on camera? Water. That we're not really talking to a studio audience. There's nobody sitting in There's here. There's no one here. There's nobody here. Um, actually, <laughs> there are people here. I think this needs to be a standard. I'll start a gallon of water and then have it done by the episode. So I finish this gallon of water. And maybe that's maybe that's my thing. Chance, you're... you're but he's not telling the truth, you guys. I am telling the truth. I he, did, but okay. hey, let's... Hey, like, subscribe, let's, whoa, wait, please no, share no, this no, episode. No, 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 no. He got that gallon. I walked in this studio and was like, oh, my God, you're drinking water? A gallon? He's like, I bought that on, well, today is. First off, I said, yes, I'm drinking a gallon of water. He bought the gallon of water literally four days ago. He's been working on this same gallon. It was three days. It was Sunday afternoon, (laughs) Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're on day four. and It's three. It's three days. It was actually less than 72 hours. He bought the water three or four days ago, okay? And he just sat here and finished it. So we don't want to mislead the people into thinking you know why that I did you that? were just fully hydrated. You know why I did that? I'm telling people to enjoy the journey, okay? It's not all about the destination. <laughs> it's not about finishing the bottle of it's water. It's not about finishing the gallon. It's about the journey. Now I know it, it takes me a comfortable three days, a less than 72 hours, three days. to finish a gallon of water. And actually, these last three days, I drank more water than I did the previous three days. So we should celebrate 
my journey. Congratulations for drinking water for the last three days because you really don't. I don't. No, you don't. You I get on my, I get on my like spurts, but I really love some guy. juice. Yeah, you're a juice cup guy. Not a juice cup. I you're do <laughs> like juice though. I'm into some juice, some drink. All right, I love you all, man. I know Donnie, you love them too. I do, really, sincerely. Yeah. I do. If nobody told you today, you are loved, and you are going to be super successful, whatever that means for you. Um, but go after happiness. I would, I would love to be successful and happy and successful and other people think I'm happy. Mm -hmm. But let's just be happy. I would take happiness over stuff any day of the week. And you guys, again, won't understand it until it happens to you. But the stuff that you desire, that the, the, the money or the house and the car, I promise you, it's not going to make you as happy as you think. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make you as happy as you think. Now, I think some of you guys do need to go be successful and go get the money and stuff like that. Because what will make you happy is your ability to do things for other people, mm -hmm. right? Your ability to have some friends come over. And so I'll, I'll do like monopoly night and I always just order food, pizza wings. That makes me happy. The fact that I ain't got to, Hey, what you going to bring? It's just, a, I'm just going to order some pizza and wings and feed my friends. And we're going to have a good time. Right. Or going, taking your family on a vacation. Mm -hmm. It takes money to do that. Right. Taking yourself. But it's not the money that makes you happy. It's your ability to do these things. So go get the money because you want to be able to be happy. Like I'm just, that's what I'm on right now. Just chasing happiness, man. Yeah. Chasing happiness, attracting happiness. Attracting. And attracting all of the tools and resources and people that put you in a position to afford happiness. There we have it. Like, subscribe, share with a friend. We love you. We out. We Peace. out.